This video is in correspondence to my study, to what extent have multinational corporations grown beyond national jurisdictions, virtually becoming independent entities beyond governmental control? The idea behind this video is to look at Amazon, Google and Starbucks briefly, and specifically their UK tax arrangements. So Google is a company that was founded in September of 1998 by some PhD students, and 15 years on it's one of the world's most well recognised multinational corporations. Google products include Google+, Translate, Scholar, Chrome, Gmail, the list goes on, including obviously the search engine. Uh, and being established in the US, Google has its headquarters in the Googleplex in California. Google has an additional 70 offices in 40 countries around the globe, and a ton of Google's money is made through advertising. So, the operations of Google in the UK have come under considerable fire for tax avoidance. The way Google has manipulated the system isn't really illegal, but here's an idea of how it works. So, Google has based its UK headquarters in Ireland, where corporation tax is lower. Despite this, a much larger the portion of the profits generated in the UK aren't actually from Ireland, but channeling these profits off to Bermuda, through Ireland, I think, is that, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, a huge amount of UK corporation tax is avoided. For example, Google's turnover in 2012 was £3 billion. Pounds. It only paid £7.3 in tax, which is only an equivalent of a quarter of 1%. The previous year, so 2011, if I'm counting that right, they only paid 0.23%. So, yeah, they're not really paying what they're supposed to be paying. But, yeah, anyway, compared to the 23 odd percent, which is usually taxed on corporations in the UK, you can understand why the UK government is getting frustrated with companies like Google when they don't pay any corporation tax compared to other businesses. Problem is, because of loopholes in the system, companies like Google are completely within their right and within the laws to do so. And this is a good example of how sometimes governments don't have complete control over businesses, despite the fact that they set and manage the arena which businesses operate in. Okay, so another good example is Starbucks. Starbucks, as I'm sure you're aware, if you have an Instagram account, is an American coffee business and is the largest of its kind in the world. Chances are you've been helping market Starbucks too if your phone has a camera. With a favourable start and progression in the UK, Starbucks did well but did so whilst leaving HMRC out of serious pocket. Not unlike Google, it used perfectly legal but manipulative methods to only pay 8.5 million in corporation tax between 1998 and 2008, which is an equivalent to 0.28%, so pretty close to Google's, of the 3 billion revenue in the same period. Way to go Starbucks, you're paying more than Google. This was however only up until 2008, since then not a penny of tax has been paid. That is, of course, except for a voluntary £5 million paid in June of 2012 in an attempt to listen to the customers. It plans to pay further wedges of tax, amounting to a total of £20 million across 2013-2014. So, considering now that over the past three years, Starbucks has raked in £1.2 billion in revenue, we can look a bit further. If we use the £20 million paid, paid, by, paid, by, Starbucks, paid by Starbucks as a reference, we find that this means 1.6% of tax has been paid in full by Starbucks. That's it. This also means that total revenue generated in the UK ever is 4.2 billion, with a total payment of tax equaling 28.5 million. Is that is that yeah? That's right. That's 0.67%. Assuming the, assuming the corporation tax has been constant at 23%. Now, granted, it hasn't, but you know. You, you know, you just know, okay? Since 1998, Starbucks should have paid 856 million. Thanks, Starbucks. This has also been achieved so dramatically because Starbucks is consistently reporting losses, and yet at the same time boasting its business of profitability, business, 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 yeah, yeah. boasting its possibility, pos oh god, boasting its profitability to investors. This is also achieved on paper through several money transfers and manipulations. This has highlighted that the UK currently has a tax culture which allows and even encourages large multinational corporations to pick and choose how much tax they want to pay. Looking finally at Amazon. Amazon is not breaking the unanimous trend in this video and is, yes, an American company which has expanded to the UK. It is the brains behind the popular Amazon Kindle, funnily enough, and the Kindle Fire tablet. 
Originating in Jeff Bezos' basement, I think I said that right, in Seattle in 1994, and starting as an online bookstore, Amazon was making $20,000 a week after just one month. The incredible growth of the internet and demand meant physical growth was needed, and international expansion soon followed. Now on to your favourite bit, the figures. So on paper, Amazon generated £320 million in revenue in the UK last year. However, this is a little bit contradictory to the £4.2 billion which the US headquarters claims and boasts has been raked in by the UK arm of the business. That's the same amount that Starbucks has made in the UK ever. So if we treat the £4.2 billion as the true statement, which it is, and then look at the £2.4 million paid in corporation tax, things aren't looking 100% right over here. In fact, they're looking pocket-sized. 0.06% of tax has been paid in UK revenue that should have been paid. This is by far the most severe tax dodging of all three of the companies we've looked at. This dramatic manipulation is achieved through the utilisation of a EU headquarters in Luxembourg, and there is a lot of long words in that sentence. Amazon claimed whilst being barbecued by British MPs that Amazon.co.uk is simply a service provider to Amazon in Luxembourg. Fair enough, until you discover that Luxembourg houses 380 Amazon employees, whilst the UK operations cumulatively house 4,200. Service provider? On top of this, Amazon received a £2.5 million grant from the UK government last year, which means that they actually paid minus £500,000, so they gained money. Way to go, Amazon. And HMRC. You're both excelling. So, overall, it's certainly clear that the UK tax system regarding multinational corporations is flimsy and needs serious improvement if the tax which should be going to the UK government is actually going to go to the UK government. On the other hand, multinational corporations need to stop being excessively greedy and taking advantages of loopholes that allow them to trade unethically in an ideal world.